Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Toshiba Thrive Android tablet. On paper, it looks a lot like other Android tablets. It has a 10-inch, uh, 1280 by 800 pixel display, uh, NVIDIA Tegra 2 1 gigahertz processor, and uh, runs Android 3.1. But it's got a couple of things that really help set it apart from the crowd. It's not the thinnest or lightest tablet around. It's actually a little bit thicker and heavier than, uh, than uh, many others, and a little bit longer, too. You can notice the bezel around the sides is fairly large. But uh, uh, the first thing that you'll notice is it's got a sort of nice textured back panel here. It's uh, plastic, but it sort of has a nice, almost rubbery feel, makes it easy to grip. But the back panel also happens to be removable. So you can just take the whole thing off and remove the battery if you need to replace the battery, if it's uh, not lasting as long as it once did, or if you have a spare battery and just want to get some more battery life out of it. So that's something that you won't see on very many Android tablets these days, and it's, uh, it's a nice feature to have. But that is only one of the things that really makes this one different. It also has full-size ports for uh, SD card slots, so you don't have a micro SD card slot, you have a full-size slot. And around here, we can open it up and access a full-size USB port, full-size uh, HDMI port, and a mini USB port. The mini USB port is the one that you would actually use to connect this to a computer and copy or uh, paste files, uh, move files between the tablet and a PC, for instance. It doesn't support um, the Android Software Developer Kit, the ADB Bridge, right now. I imagine that'll be coming soon, but what that means is I wasn't able to take any screenshots on my computer from the tablet. It's not really the end of the world. Um, most people are probably going to want to use it for transferring files. The USB port you can actually use to plug in USB flash storage, um, a mouse, keyboard, other peripherals, and the HDMI port you can run out video to a monitor or a, um, a uh, television, high definition television set. Power port, um, headset jack, down here is a docking port for optional dock accessories. This is a uh, um, button that actually helps keep the cover in place, so if that's locked, it's not going to come off accidentally. It's pretty sturdy, it's probably not going to come off accidentally anyway. There's a front-facing camera and a rear-facing camera, and we've actually got a couple of status LEDs, very sort of a PC-like in uh, terms of we've got the, this guy here telling us that the uh, power is on, but it's sleeping battery indicator, wireless indicator. Um, and over here we have a screen orientation lock, volume buttons, and a power button. The buttons aren't quite as easy to press as I would like, but they're not that bad. And it looks like I could snap the case a little bit tighter there. Now, um, when you load it up, honestly, the software doesn't feel very different from what you get from other Honeycomb tablets, including the Motorola Zoom, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, and so forth. Uh, it's the Android 3.1 interface. We've got a nice list of apps. multiple home screens, the ability to install widgets, and so forth. There are a couple of things that are a little bit different. There's a file manager, which Android doesn't include by default, and you can use this to copy and paste photos to and from uh, a flashcard, for instance, or make other changes. You've got um, some Samsung-specific app stores. So there's a bookstore, an app store, which doesn't want to load at the moment, but the uh, the App Store is honestly not, there's not as much in it in the App Store or the Bookstore as you would find in the uh, default Android market, which does come preloaded, so there's not much reason to use it. One uh, thing that is kind of nice here is a separate media player, which supports um, audio, video, photos, and other content here. And let me turn down the volume and show you a video playback. Uh, it doesn't support a lot of codecs. I, I wasn't able to get it to work with XVID or DivX um, or some other files, but it does support uh, your basic H.264 and, uh, and other MP4 formats. So, And it does support HDMI output, so you can actually play a video on a, a large television set. Um, one thing that I noticed is that when you're mirroring the display, you can play Angry Birds on a big screen TV, you can play video on a big screen TV using this application, or using this device, but what you can't do is dim the screen while you're playing it on the big screen. Um, you're going to wind up seeing both um, channels. 
and I've got a cat stuck in something over here, but uh, I'll deal with that in a moment. In, in the meantime, I um, just wanted to show you, it also comes with a quick office for accessing office software. Um, Toshiba sort of makes a big deal of the fact that it comes with LogMeIn software, but it's, um, the LogMeIn software is really just a 45 day free trial. Um, let me go ahead and set up something here and show you, while I let the cat out of the closet, that when you prop it up and plug in some USB peripherals that it basically turns into like a little computer. So that is not the peripheral I actually meant to plug in. I've got too many things on my desk here. So I've got a USB hub with a couple of things plugged in at the moment. There's a flash drive, a mouse, and a keyboard. This stand was actually meant to hold up a much lighter PDA, not a full tablet, which weighs 1.6 pounds. So, now that we've got everything all sort of cabled up here, we've got mouse, keyboard, flash drive, and let's put this in a place where you can see the action on screen. Preferably without so much glare. Yeah, I don't think we can do too much about the glare. But uh, when you plug everything in, you actually get a mouse cursor on the display. You can sort of see it in the corner there, I think. And so we can use that to navigate the tablet now. We can go to the file manager and view files that are in the flash drive. We can right click on them to, uh, actually I think a right click and a left click basically does the same thing here. Uh, it tells us what we want to do, but let's try a long click. And now we can copy, paste, share, rename, etc. And move files from the main storage to the flash drive and vice versa, which is a nice feature. We can go to the, we can move between screens by clicking and dragging as if you were tapping your finger and sliding it across, or you can tap on an icon to do any uh, particular action. So let's go ahead and open a browser and show you that I can enter text using a keyboard. And the browser is relatively fast. Overall, I ran a number of benchmarks on this, and it's very similar in, in terms of performance to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. You've got a... Um, um, no thanks. You've got a reasonably fast computer, handles multimedia pretty well, uh, number crunching pretty well, and um, it does a pretty good job with the uh, Sun, Sun Spider JavaScript test. Um, I've seen better, but I've, I've definitely seen worse um, devices. For tablets, it's, it's definitely one of the fastest around. Um, you can double click to zoom in and out. There's no multi-touch, of course, if you're using a mouse, but there's nothing preventing you from going back to the screen, even when you've got a mouse and keyboard plugged in. Um, supports multiple tabs. And so, you know, overall the experience here is very PC-like when you plug in a mouse, a keyboard, as many other peripherals as you can fit into a USB port, uh, USB hub. So it's, uh, it's a pretty neat experience and something that you don't get from a lot of Android tablets. And overall it's, uh, Pretty, pretty fast and responsive when you're doing these things too. So um, definitely sets it apart from the crowd. Uh, Price-wise, the Toshiba Thrive starts at 429 for a model with 8 gigabytes of internal storage. It goes all the way up to uh, about 579 if you want, 32 gigabytes. And um, it's not the thinnest, not the lightest. If you primarily are looking for a tablet that you're going to be able to take on the road with you and feel like there's nothing in your bag, the Galaxy Tab 10.1 might be a better solution. But that one actually doesn't have any real expansion opportunities. There's no SD card slot at all. This has a full-size SD card slot, the full-size USB port, the HDMI port. I mean, not only can I use it sort of like a, a desktop computer here, I could plug in an external display and really surf the web, type documents, um, do all sorts of things using the tablet as a central hub, uh, preferably with a smaller keyboard than, uh, than the one I'm using right now. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a pretty interesting take on the Android tablet, and if you're looking for something that does a little bit more of a PC-like function, 
then the Toshiba Thrive might be worth considering. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.